a big, big inhale together. Inhale some love. And exhale some peace out to our beautiful planet. I am so completely, deeply privileged and honored to share an experience with you with my very special guest. I like to call him the Quincy Jones of the psychedelic trance movement. He is the Santa Claus of love and radiance. He is somebody who has inspired me as an artist and as a musician and as a person on this planet who wants to make a difference with her passion. And I am so grateful to share with you. We've had a couple technical difficulties, but guess what? We are not giving up. And so my buddy, <laughs> we're not giving up. my buddy Roger Ram from Spangle is talking to us live in London. Aloha, beautiful soul. Wow. <laughs> the is fantastic. It reminds me of when we were kids and we had two Coca-Cola tins and a piece of string and you used to stand across and speak into the can. This is what it reminds me of with you on the iPhone. And we've got all this technology around us and we've gone back to the primitive. It's okay. Communication is everything. Go for it, Valerie. Oh my gosh. I, it's so fun. Like you and I have had this fun relationship and I want to, I want to thank technology because you know, technology is something that brought us together. And I reached out to you and just said, thank you for your beautiful show at Red Rocks. And I love you and appreciate you. And you've changed my life. And you responded to me. And I was like, is, really? Like you're on the other side for real of the other can, you know, the string in the can. And then I was like, oh man, I'm going for it. I'm going to ask you if you would like to share your message with the, the, oh, the dance, our you, dreams girl. tribe, because I, your message is so powerful. Your artwork is so powerful artwork through music and through visuals and through collaborating with all these other artists and tip records and everything that you've done. You have shown us as, as young artists, like how to, how to bring our art forward. So I want to ask you, how's it going? <laughs> it's a state of bliss right now. <laughs> and, wonderful. Oh my wonderful. God. And so, you know, when I got to ask you about, you know, becoming a guest on this show, I really want to know, like, what's your, you know, you're, you're a, a year or two older than I am. Um, <laughs> Hey, you better tell your listeners how old I am. They probably don't know. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll be 80 next year. Fuck off. No way. 80? Yeah. Oh, my 80 God. Next year. Okay, can I DJ at your birthday party? Please, oh, please, oh, pretty, please, please, please. I will do any. Oh, my God. I want to celebrate you so much. I was at Willie Nelson's 80th birthday party, so I want to be at your 80th birthday party, too. Perfect. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So you're still going though. You're not like some dude who's like hanging out and collecting paychecks or sitting around in the golf oh, course. Like God. you are, you're leaving for Brazil like tonight or tomorrow, right? Yeah, no, next week. Yeah. But you know, I, I mean, this has been going on for over 50 years. I mean, I'm, oh of course you probably know about my history with quintessence and that was the sixties and the seventies and playing with the Floyd, you know, all of that. And then that finished. And then I took eight years off to look after my daughter who was just born. And I did no music at all for eight years. Wow. And then I discovered synthesizers. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I discovered synthesizers. Oh my gosh. I, I can really relate to taking time off to taking care of my children. You know, that's what I did as a mom. And now I'm coming back into, you know, my music passion, yeah. you know, but yeah. like, what was that like for you as, as a, as an artist and as a musician to take that chunk of time off to be super dad, you know, like, and then come back into it and keep going. Yeah. Well, I thought that was the end. It was sort of like done 
three or four hundred gigs. We've made five albums with Ireland and all of that. And I thought, well, you know, it's time to look after my daughter. And it was the most bonding time of all. And that I have no regrets because there's nothing to beat that. I mean, no tune, no band, no adulation, nothing. I mean, the bond with you. And she's now 50, and we see. I'm going up to see her tomorrow, and she's brilliant, and everything is wonderful. So then that finished in the late uh, 70s and the 80s turned, and I thought, hey, it's time to get back, and what's happening in the musical world? And then I started hearing all this new type of music, which was a revolution in, in the 80s in England. So I went out and I bought myself 20 synthesizers and locked myself in a room for five years. <laughs> oh my God. No one else would play with me. I couldn't meet anybody. No one had synthesizers. I had the first computer in 81, was a Yamaha CX-5, and I started writing stuff on the computer. And this was like, this is early, 81. I mean, nothing had really happened in the trance world until... 89 when i went to goa and then then it all really started because we started making infinity projects and wrote 50 or 60 tunes of that and so everything has been sort of a stepping stone to leading up to spongle it didn't you know people think i just spongle came out from well it did sort of come out from the sky but uh once that started once you have a direction in life it, it you know, there are millions of satellites you can send out, as you say, to collaborate with people and all of that. It's a very vibrant music scene here in the UK. And it's just so much fun to every week play with a different musician. I've got five different bands going at the moment. It's really a busy time. We've just started a new one called the Nudniks, which is Simon Password and his chief engineer. Jamie Grenchen. He's a genius too. He's like Simon. So the three of us are working this week and we're doing an album or something or experimenting. But this is a new direction from Spongle. It's like the next diversion. So it's pretty busy right now. And then working with all the trans boys with Tristan and Ollie Wisdom and ESP. And there's a lot of groups and do the vocal samples and stuff. It's just having the best time of my life ever. <laughs> Every day is just absolutely amazing. And I think, how is this possible? You know, I've done nothing. I just sort of say yes and hang around with people who are talented. Yes. This is the secret. Always up your game by playing with people who are much better than yourself, whether it's tennis or music. And all the people I play with are better than they are. Competent. Totally. I know. I hear that. Like, always be the the not that we're stupid, but like always be the least smart or the least talented person in the room, like surround yourself with the like people who are better than you are. And, and that takes a, I think that takes quite a skill because a lot of us want to be the like, Oh, I want to be the coolest. And it's like, Nope, be the least because then you're going to up your game. Like you, you even mentioned tennis. Yeah. And I remember that in a reference from a book and it's like, yes, like how do you, and so how do you, I mean, obviously, <laughs> I mean, you've been crushing it for so long. Like how, as a female DJ and as a female artist, you know, like I feel like my tribe is smaller, you know, and I feel like I've been, uh, a little bit more intimidated to surround myself with people because I is just a little different. And so you've obviously surrounded yourself yeah. with the best in the, the industry, the best artists and the best hearts, you know, not just obviously, you know, skill level, but it's definitely like these beautiful souls who want to spread love and light and connection and unity to the planet. Like, how did you... How do you keep saying yes? Like you said, I said yes. Like, how do you keep saying yes to the right people? Like, what's your filtering mechanism to get the right uh, people in your life? That's very important. Well, the word is discrimination. Mm -hmm. Because as you go through life, you're going to meet all sorts of people. Some good, some not so good, some fantastic, some high. Some... So this is the part. You meet people, you, you try to get into their space, they try to get into yours, and this is how one thing leads on to another. I mean, it's a long, long, complicated search. Yeah. It's like a pilgrimage. You know, you really set off with a pair of sunglasses and five dollars and just hope everything's going to work out. And that's always how I, I've lived my life. Like, I lived, left Australia when I was 17, got on a boat for 
ten dollars and it took me to India. This was in 1959. Wow. And I found myself in India. I did not know one person. There were no Westerners there. There was nothing. It's just ancient India. And I was so blown away. I'm getting goosebumps now talking about it. It was like coming from Melbourne and that really straight materialistic world that everybody was in to go into a complete another dimension of where it's got nothing to do with materialism, really. It's got to do with a whole other ball game. And then just traveling around the world, going round and round, many, many times I went round and then, of course, go to New York and study. And get, when you study, you study with the masters. It's no yeah. use studying with some schnorra, some <laughs> flamingo out in the wilderness. You go and you get the top guy. So I wrote to him from Australia. I said, will you take me as a pupil? He said, you've got to come to my studio in Queens from Melbourne, Australia for an interview. And I'll give you 20 minutes and you've got to pay for that 20 minutes. Wow. That, and he hung up the phone. And I said, got to on a plane and came over and had my audition with him. And that was Lenny Tristano, who is one of the great jazz pianists of New York and a great teacher and and all that. So I studied with him for a couple of years in New York City. I was just a young guy. I knew nothing. Oh. I mean, conservatory and stuff like that. But this guy taught me about life. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't about music. You know, it was about music, but it was much more than that. And so, you know, you pick it up from your friends, you pick it up from your parents, you pick it up from your teachers, and if you're lucky to have a guru or a holy man in your life, that can really be a shortcut too. It's not necessary. I mean, you are your own guru, as I'm sure you know that for sure. But the most, you know, all the help that's possible, everybody that's sort of for you, you gather around and you just make this circle of love and energy and you launch off and you get to the next dimension. And so it goes on step by step by step. And it's still going on right now with you. And it feels so like, I mean, your energy and your enthusiasm and your, your zest, I feel from you, your vibration. Like, I feel like I'm talking to like my 15 year old best friend, you know, like you're still this, like, you're still this like super high energy. Like I'm literally just scratching the surface and getting started of this thing. Like you don't have some energy of like, yeah, I'm about to wrap it up and we're cool. And yeah, let's go, let's go kick it over by the pool. Like I sense this, like this the enthusiasm that I don't get from all people on the planet. And I get this from you and I'm just like, I'm so electrified by you right now. So how do you, how do, is that just like natural? Is that something that is, like you've been born with or is that something you've have a practice that you cultivate? Like, how does that work for you? Because you're magic. Like, you are so magical. You no, know, um, look, this is the thing, Valerie. We are all magical. We are all magicians. But we haven't found the formula. We haven't decoded the information that's coming in, like me not getting on to Zoom. <laughs> right if you would give me the right spiritual link or the right, you know, uh, philosophy that would be the link that I would like to get into but we learn from each other so much I mean I'm you say you enjoying and your privilege I am so thankful to you to spare the time and the energy and involve me in your project I don't know the ins and outs of it but I'm really honored that you asked me and of course I'll take the time and speak to all our brethren and sisterhood out there because this is what it's about it's not about me standing up in front of a microphone and going you know I mean, we know all of that. What's yeah. more important is where all that's, you know, it's family, love, enlightenment, pursuit of our dreams. The energy is always there. We've got too much energy. The energy is bombarding us. Neutrinos are going through us as we speak. Yeah. I mean, what we've got to just do is take a deep breath and focus and remember our divinity that's inside of us, which is not only eternal, it's just an enormous, gigantic thing that's going on. And all we have to do is pluck a little bit of that energy and we're ready to roll. I mean, we don't need to count how many bottles are in the wine house. All we want to have is one bottle and we'll, that's enough for us. I mean, we don't need everything. We just have to 
take what we need and use that and cultivate it. But it's an adventure. The whole thing is an adventure. It's a game. It's sort of a joke in a way, but it's a good one. It's a good joke. It's a good story. But we've got to also be very detached from all of that. The name, the fame, and all that bullshit. It's so easy to get down the wrong cul-de-sac and end up in a position or a place that you really don't want to be or you can't go any further. So it's just a question like you, you're so open and that's, that will bring everything to you. You don't have to hardly do anything. You don't. And so get receptive. let me ask you a question. So obviously, you know, we're at different uh, stages of our spiral of this particular incarnation. What do you think happens after our, your spirit, your soul leaves this, this, right. this vehicle that we've been gifted to play on earth with? It's a great question. One, you know, you read all the books and you meet all the people and you go to India and you meet the holy man and, and you, you know, you, you're trying to find, what, so what's the specific question again? Just let's isolate what what again. what do you think happens like what happens oh, after yeah, you right. pass like are, are you a soul packet yeah. that goes on to another being do you go to this heaven right. thing no, no, is there no, nothing no, that happens what do you think happens what's your philosophy well, it's interesting that you ask that question because for 79 years i've been really trying to figure it out and when i was in india last january i had a chunga trip which is the derivative, I'm sure you know all about it, DMT and everything. And I had the death experience for the first time in a thousand trips. Wow. I really did. I lay there and I sort of went out of my body and I was this close from leaving my body. I really felt it. But then this incredible vision came to me as I was lying in my bed next to the Arabian Ocean and said, it's all about disembodied consciousness. Mm. That's what it is, because I was lying there and it was nothing to do with my body or Ron Rockwell or Rajaram. It was way beyond that. And I thought to myself, well, what, what is it? Well, you don't need your body, obviously, but you've got your consciousness and that's super consciousness, depending on your karma and your development and what you've done, what you've achieved, what you haven't done, your good, bad, all of those things come into play. But if you just surrender to the void, as the Beatles said, you just let yourself go. That's the other dimension. And I suddenly realized at the end of that trip, there is nothing ever to fear. There is no such thing as death anymore because it's just a passing into another super dimension, one possibly much higher and much more far up because the body, in a way, is a drag. I've got a sore knee, I've got a You know, you're all of these things you're weighed down by the body. When you break out of the body and you're just eternal spirit i'm sorry i'm getting carried i know i was noticing i was like you're doing this i'm like put the phone over your nose in your mouth buddy <laughs> it felt fantastic though i mean I, I i couldn't wait to tell my best buddy mm. it was like a discovery because i really felt it it wasn't like some hippie dream that's going to be all flowers and gardens and maybe it is but i really felt on that spiritual level that we are being looked after that yeah. was the sort of feeling it was like don't question it don't give it a name don't try to analyze it or anything like that you can't it's beyond your mind if you even think about it it sort of sullies it you have to just take it in its purest form and just say i believe that it's going to be okay and i've always had that belief even when it's not okay you go through it because you've got faith and faith is the root of all. Faith in yourself. You got it. Your, your experience. Faith in your vision. Faith in your enlightenment. And it's like every moment we're we're being bombarded with information, and some of it's useless, and some of it is absolutely indispensable. So that was what I said. You don't die. You just keep grooving on, and you become groovier. <laughs> I love it. Uh, in the previous group. But um, it's all good. And people have really, you know, shouldn't be depressed about the world or the situation or anything like that. You should just embrace it and think, wow, the potential is amazing. If you're in Australia and want to leave, get on a boat, leave. You want to go to the moon, go to the moon. Everything's within your reach now. That's the trouble. There's too many possibilities. But think where you want to go. Think what do you want to do? What is 
is your relationship to the planet Earth? What can we do to help it and survive it and, and move on? So, yeah, that's a good question. I love it. I know. You know, I just, I want to share one quick thing. Like everything you said, I feel like there's, there's two sides to that, that, that answer. Okay. And I feel like, you know, we have this, like, you know, what I'm hearing you say is we get to go be groovy and groove on. And it's like, some people have this mentality of like, we're this like little soul packet and it's us, this ego thing that moves on as us. And then some other folks, I mean, there's a million of them, but other people like, you know, in my Kundalini practice, we talk about like, kind of like the drop of the water that goes back into the ocean and it becomes one with everything. And then it goes and gets this new thing and it gets to go be this other expression of itself, but it still is everything, but it still gets to be unique and individual. So I think there's like, I mean, there's just so much infinity that we get to play with. And obviously, you know, that's your, your record label and, and, oh gosh. And okay. So you were talking about, um, oh, and the second thing I wanted to say, so, I'm, I'm, I'm listening and recording you through this phone because we are like MacGyver and we decided that we had to make this work no matter what. And this was the way that we're going to make it work, right? As you were speaking, I could feel literally the air of the sound current coming through right here to my lips. And as you, and I'm feeling it right now too. And I find it fascinating because whoever's listening to this podcast right now, whether you're listening to it in earbuds, whether you're listening to it through speakers, the sound current, the current, this magical vibration that we all are a part of. And that obviously you and I, and all of these other beautiful artists, like want to become, you know, uh, servants of and masters of, you know, it's so cool that like right now your breath, like the way that you're speaking and I literally can feel you vibrating in my phone and, and it's going up like little tiny doses of wind to my face and it's, Wow. And it's in time. And that's what's so cool because technology, it's not like, okay, you're in London and I'm in Boulder, Colorado, and this is happening in real time. And when you giggle, it's literally vibrating my face and my fingers. <laughs> you're right, right. Fantastic. That's beautiful. I'm so glad we can connect. <laughs> Really, you know, smoke signals, you know, mudras, anything. We we'll connect. We're definitely there. It's so cool. Yeah, it's magic. It is magic. And so let's talk about the sound current and like why, I mean, obviously you're an artist and everything you've done is around sound, but you've also included the visual component of, of the experience for your audiences and for people. And, you know, you're like the psychedelic shaman. And so why include all of these variables for everybody's journey? Like, what has it done for you? Like, you know, it's one thing to go on a sound journey, but then to include all of the visuals. I mean, and you're like, you're fun. I got to see you at Red Rocks. Yay. That was like the most beautiful show. It's so much fun and playfulness. And that's what I used to like to do too, was like, how can we incorporate all of the senses into our our audience's experience? And so why why that for you and not selling envelopes? You got me there. I got you. I got you on the envelope that sales. Was well, that was the ideas of growing up with my daughter. I know. I got you, brother. You got me there. You know, everything's a show, really. You know, whether you're DJ or whatever you're doing, it's sort of you're putting yourself out in front of people, and that takes a lot of courage in the beginning because you don't want to fail. And it's, even now, I'm always always nervous before I play. Me too. It doesn't matter what. Even if it's 15 people, that's sometimes harder than, you know, 15,000. What do you do for a ritual before you play? Like, I have rituals, and then I, I my stomach hurts, and I have to go to the bathroom, and I'm, yeah. like, going to throw up. It's awful. But I love it, and I never will quit. <laughs> All of those things and more. But you, you learn again. My Swami taught me about mantras, and mm. that's really a help when you have your own personal little thing you can go into that can calm you down and 
mindfully of the path and also breathing, as you've already said. That's number one. I mean, without breath, what are we? Right. And so you do these sound mantras and maybe visual mantras and you try to project what's going to happen and how can you relate to that audience? What's the first thing you're going to say to them? And it was, was very intimidating at Red Rocks to walk out and see those 20,000 people, 10,000 people. And then no one, so I ended up by not saying too much at all because I just really didn't have the words to place that monumental epic moment. Like, so I just, music is probably the best way of doing it. But it is. It, you know, it was a very, very special event, you know, third time at Red Rocks. And it, for me, it's the best venue in the world without any question. Nothing even comes close. I mean, I've seen them all and I've seen the photos and we've been invited. No, Red Rocks is the one. It's like magic place. It's just <laughs> phenomenal that we could do that. Uh, and I don't know whether we'll ever come back and do it but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the now yeah. let's talk about the now yeah rather than the future well and let's talk about yeah. let's talk about like how you know you obviously as an artist you get a platform and you get a microphone and you've earned the position of being able to speak in front of a thousand people, two people, 10,000 people, however many it is. Um, one of the things that I think is super important as artists, you know, whether you're an actress or a musician or a DJ or whatever, a pol politician, like you've earned the right to people's attention. And so I think some of the most important things that are going on right now on our planet, and we talk about this on Dance Our Dreams, is the sustainable development goals from the United Nations, which yeah. there are 17 of them, you know, and so it's anything from no poverty to quality education to equal rights to life above land to clean water to partnerships for the goal to climate change, et cetera, et cetera. So how are you, how are you using this gorgeous platform that you have been cultivating and working your butt off for and gifted with how how do you want to share you know that 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 privilege with the world and give them a little nugget of like how they can go make a difference in their own lives that will make a difference on the planet well I look at it like we're really a big family, yes. which started pretty small many years ago, and now it's massive. You can't go to you go to the most remote place on the planet, you'll see a chip T-shirt or someone with something or a sign of some description that links you in, and you realize this thing is enormous that goes around the planet. So we're all influencing each other. I think this is what's so great about it. You meet someone who knows a particular thing, and they pass, excuse me, that information to you, yeah. and maybe they glean something from you. Um, it's very powerful the way we interact with people and how we develop friendships with people. And those friendships, especially at parties, people think they're frivolous. They're the most important. And McKenna said a party's the most important thing on the planet. You meet these people, you fall in love with them, you marry them, you have kids. I bring the kids to the party. The kids kids are now coming. Bella, who's 14, comes to all the spongles and everything. Sasha's 50. She's been coming from the beginning. And Bella will bring her school friends. And so, you know, it goes on of the family increases but as i said before the only way you can really have an impact on people and not so much the words but by the manifestation of what you believe in whether it's recycling your little plastic thing and showing the guy next door doesn't do it but you really do it and you really show that you can do it in a way of loving way clean your rubbish don't put you know your feet struck on our tins and top and mix it all up you know it's up to you to make a clean package of everything in your life you don't want to leave traces yeah. of your ugliness you want to leave traces of your beauty and creativity which is what we're all about and um, I mean, there are so many ways you can help the planet, and we're doing it every day in our small ways. But I did have something I wanted to run past you. Yes. I, I think this is... A, I had a flash the other night about energy, how we can... You know, because that's a problem today. Okay, this is my idea, and it may be a total fantasy, but I ran past someone who's in startup ventures two nights ago, and they were really interested, and this is the idea. All around the world, they have these running machines, treadmill machines that yep. people are doing this all day long. In England, 100,000, America, millions, all around the world, home people have them, everybody's doing this. 
and they're going nowhere. Right. Because they're sitting on the spot. But what are they doing? They're turning a giant flywheel, which is what gives them a pedal. So my idea was you get a solenoid battery company and they put this battery which charges up from the flywheel on every machine in the country every little box then can run the gymnasium lights the pool the heating and everything and it's they've got the technology they do have these self-charging batteries and the machines are in place so you just got to have a little sort of engineering genius how to strap it in and gather that power but that way there's free energy going to waste does that sound crazy? No, it doesn't sound crazy. This is actually, it's in place in some gyms around the world. And I also think stepping it up a level. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. So there are a couple dance floors here. I think there's one in Portland at the, I want to say the Crystal Ballroom. Uh, yeah. There's there's kinetic dance floors that bounce. And yeah. so the thousands or hundreds or however many people are on the dance floors can move and you can translate the kinetic energy into power that will, again, what you just said, like give lights the power, right. give the sound the power. So the more people dance, maybe the louder you're going to get some music right. or something. Like we have the opportunity and, and it's really connecting the dots, like you just said. Like how do you get that? Absolutely. that yeah. yeah. And, and there's yeah. no reason that every treadmill or every dance floor couldn't allow its, its kinetic energy to get transferred into something that, you know, powers the lights and powers the, the electricity so that you and I can talk. Economical, viable sense to do that. And you know, there's, I'm sure the, there's a million young brains out in America and the, you know, Silicon Valley, everything. Things will change and we'll be able to harness these energy. And then while we're doing that, we have to get rid of all the bad energy, like the fracking and all of that. Oh, God. We've got our problems here. Yeah. And we're fighting that. We go on demonstrations and we, you know, donate to various causes that are helping because they, they're the people who go out on the front line and that's really important. I've got to go up the front line, slightly different front line, but in any way that we can possibly help or spread your message or do anything to this involvement of planet and protection, we're, you know, really, we're up for it. And I'll bring all my friends into it. <laughs> Let's do it. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, all you have to do is sort of, you know, get it in shape, basically. But I love what you're doing and what you're saying. It's very inspiring. Thank, Thank you. you, Valerie. Really, you're really an amazing woman you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Me, just before we go on, how many children have you got? I have two. I have a 13-year-old um, a daughter named Athena and an 11-year-old son named Apollo. <laughs> And they're, wow, they're the love, nice. I know. And they oh, literally, no, I wonderful. swear, they embody the essence of their Greek God um, energy. You know, right. she is like yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, warrior yeah. and he is like the medicine yeah. son, music man. It's like so cool. And I'm so, never in a million years did I ever think I would have kids. And now here I am, a mama. And here you are. And it's nearly the same age as Bella, who's just about to turn 14. Oh my but gosh. Troy said you become your name. So it was very interesting he said that. So we do. But you keep your names, the Greek gods or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you get Raja Ram. Okay, Ron Rothfield. <laughs> Who wants that name? Yeah, and then, so, so where did the name come? How did you get inspired for this, uh, your name? And like, do you feel like, because I'm, I'm like Valerie, the vibe goddess. And I think like the vibe goddess is like, I want to help people like raise their vibration and either have calm vibrations or high vibrate, whatever it is. Like I thought like, that's my superpower. So your superpower is obviously right. your name. And so as artists, yeah. it's so much fun because we can name ourselves whatever we want. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that. Exactly. Well, uh, I've been living in Greece for two years on a Greek island with my wife and she became, she conceived and we had the best life there. I had a five uh, a house with five sun balconies overlooking the Peloponnese Mountains and 12 peacocks in my garden. Oh, my gosh. 100 pistachio trees. Oh, my we gosh. Two years of our life on this Mediterranean island, crystal clear water, just finding out about ourselves. And anyhow, we had to go back to the UK. And we got back to the UK and we said... I think we should go to India and find a guru. And, and Nita was there with a the baby, and she said, but look, it's too difficult right now to go to India. I said, but I really wanted to have a guru. I wanted someone to tell me about. This was late 60s, 
1968, like way before you were born. Uh, Anyhow, two years I'm before I was born. Though. Not that many years. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> I had a very good friend who took me to go and took me, and he said to me, I know somebody who is an enlightened human being. I said, oh, yeah, I've heard. Because there were a lot of gurus in the 60s in London. It was full of gurus. Sure. I'm like, no, I mean, a to Z, you could look up gurus in a phone book. <laughs> Anyhow, he said, look, there's a guy you should meet, this Swami Amakananda, who's from India, and he's living in London. He said, here's his telephone number. Why don't you give him a ring? He said, this guy is really amazing. And Paul went off back to India. So I rang up this guy, and I said, is that Swami G? He said, yes. I said, uh, look, it's uh, Ron Rothfeld. <laughs> and I said, I'd love to come out to your ashram. He said, I have no ashram. I said, well, what? Can I come to your house? He said, no. He said, I'll come to your house. He said, you'll come to my house. The guru, come into my house. This is very weird. I was already, so the whole week passed and I was really nervous and the doorbell rang on the Saturday. I thought, what have I let myself in for? And I opened the door and there was this most fantastic human being standing there, six foot one, Hollywood smile, incredible looking human being. And he came in through my front door and he looked me in the eye like this. He said, Roger, um, I said, no, I said, so, I said, my name's Ron Rothfield. He said, you will never be called Ron Rothfield from this moment on. You are Roger Ram. That is your name, and that's who you're going to become. <gasps> said, what are you talking about? I didn't know anything about this stuff. I said, come on in, come on in. I, he came in, and he sat down, and from that moment to the next nearly 30 years I was with him, he never spoke about anything except spiritual life. Wow. In all those hundreds and thousands of hours I spent with him, all he did was pump me up <laughs> with Kali and Durga and Lakshmi and Ganesh and Shiva. And he, we found our way. He gave us our mantras and there was a small group of us and we've still got that same group together now, except they've all had kids and the kids have got kids and the ashram still goes. So, yeah, I was very lucky to be given that name by that guru. And uh, it did change my life completely from that day on. I went out the next week and we got a, a residency in London and Drury Lane with a band I was just putting together. And I said, well, what are you doing? He said, you sing mantras over rock and roll. Yes! <laughs> and we all went to the gig. We put a strobe light up and a black light up. And we had 500 people came to this hall and we said, we, we didn't know what we were going to play. We rehearsed a couple of times. We just improvised because that's what we did and put in the mantras. Within six weeks, we had 12 record companies after us. We were on the cover of Time Out. Within three months, we'd gone from nothing completely playing with a Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, The Who, and all of that shit. And it was just an amazing thing. And that was all because of him really shoving me into this world. Oh, my gosh. And he predicted everything that was going to happen. He told me everything. He laid it out completely. I said, come on. Don't, you know, I was really completely disrespectful. I was saying, oh, don't give me a shit, Swallow. You know, you don't know that. You will see, Papa. You will see. <laughs> he predicted everything, the birth, everything, the, the whole thing. So he's gone now, but he's with us a lot of the time. And I'm only using it to illustrate. You don't need a guru, but if someone can, if you're going into the Boulder, Colorado, and you're going up the mountains, it makes sense to go with someone who's gone that journey before. They'll lead you up the mountain. They'll tell you not to go into the swamp, into the cesspool, keep going, move. And because he's been there, and this guru guy had been there. He's had a thousand million lives. And he was just effervescent, bubbling visionary that never slept, meditated all the time. It was an unbelievable guy. And it's like really small little ashram and it was like we are so blessed to have that because it's like having your own personal you don't have to form a line and you know you just ring him up and you'd come around anyhow that was the story how i got my name oh my gosh that is so remarkable and oh i didn't know that at all <laughs> like holy cow how do you There's a lot of things i know I, like you need to like do a documentary and a book or 10 books or a trilogy whatever like you need to go i mean people need to hear this i think you know and especially yeah. now in this day and age when we have 
yeah. so many quote unquote spiritual teachers and gurus and leaders yeah. out there. And even like I started doing Kundalini yoga teacher training because I wanted to learn more about the practice. And then I learned about one of my teachers yeah. and uh, there are a lot of reports of him sexually abusing women, you know, and he's uh -huh. this guru guy. Right. And I'm like, darn it. You know, like I really was wanting to feel finally something as part of a family of, of, of a tradition yeah. that I could like emulate. And, and I love the practice still, but I felt like, how do I trust, you know, especially as a woman, how do I trust a man, you know, who's claiming to be my spiritual superior, but not, you know, in a humble way, supposedly, but that, it's like, that's such a trip. Right. And I think from man to man, it's that, one thing. And from woman to man, it's another. So how do you, what would you tell people right now, all the young people out there who are searching that, for that? You've got to find out whether someone's real or not. And how do you do that? Finding out whether, how do you do that by testing them? Mm. I tested that Swami for years with my doubts, with my thing, and I'd always come into conflict, not conflict, but it was like this energy of trying to get the energy right between us. And and then I realized I really didn't know very much. I mean, it was sort of, that was a great discovery when they sort of just, you nothing really. And then you realize there's a long way to go. But yeah. How to trust someone? I wouldn't trust anybody. I mean, basically, it takes a long time to develop that trust because yeah. we know how many gurus have abused people or people in sports and people. Abuse is just part, unfortunately, of this, the horrible side of our world that we live in. But yeah. you've got, again, we come back to that word discrimination. There's a lot of gurus that you pick for one with the right voice, the way he walks, the way he shakes your hand, the way when you look into his eyes, what do you see? What does he, what words does that he use? Is he for you? Is he going to save you? Is he going to lift your heart? Is he going to protect you? Is he your swami? And you may think, mm, I don't know. I have to test him again next week. And this went on and on. And so for you, you have to be very, very careful as being a woman. You have to be very assertive and very clear and not gullible. You, even though they're very overpowering people, and these gurus really know how to play the game. They know how to get people to sign up. I mean, you've known a lot of testaments of different gurus. We won't go into different names. Yeah. But there's fake gurus out there. Of course, there's fake everything, fake paintings, fake people, fake jewelry. There's a world that's full of fakes, so we have to find out what's real. Yeah. And that means probing, investigation, testing, examining, reading, doing the thing, going to the extreme limits. I mean, you know, I took acid with the Swami. I mean, this guy was... I mean, he, I, I still can't work out what, what happened. I was <laughs> my head and think, what the fuck? It's like, how did this all happen? I opened the door and I suddenly got a new name. I mean, that didn't make any sense. But it all makes sense now. And he gathered us all around and everybody got a name. Everybody in the ashram got a name and they still use those names today. Wow. 30 years later, everyone is still, you know, Jane Orion, Narada Mooney, Lakshmi, Shiva Shakti, all of the devotees, they've all got this, and they're all part of that family, but with their own direction and their own deity and their own path. There are many, so many paths we can go down, but take the clean path, you always said, don't take the dirty path, the short, dirty path, that's not the one, you take a mac lit glowing effervescent shining diamond in the sky path and that's the one we want so that's anyhow that was the guru story Oh my gosh, what a great story. Have you, so it sounds like you obviously listened to some intuition because like for, you know, a Westerner yeah. to go experience that, you know, it's easy to be like the doubting Thomas and just be like, ah, I'm not going to do that. But you clearly had something in your heart and in your intuition that was like, yep, I'm doing this. Like, have you ever gone against yeah. your intuition? Have you ever just been like, no, and you followed your like left brain or whatever, and then you're like, shit, I, what did I just do? Like, how did, and then how do you rectify that? I have made more mistakes than the average human specimen on the planet. I have been <laughs> ripped off. I've been, you know, every possible thing that you can think of as a DJ or a person or a spiritual aspirant has happened. And it's like you have to go through all those adversities to find out 
the yes and the no, mm. the yin and the yang, the pin and the pong. I mean, it all goes sort of in this giant thing. That we've got all the puzzles of the rubric cube and we're spinning it around hoping that we're going to get all red or white or green. And it doesn't happen. There's always that one white in the middle of the blue and you're trying, you're trying to get it together. But... You, know, you don't meet many people who are enlightened these days. I mean, if they had the nerve to say to you, I'm enlightened, you just want to kick them in the ass. I mean, who wants to hear that? That's really ugly. Yeah. But if you just meet someone and you look at them and they're acting like an enlightened person without saying anything about it, that, that has an influence on you. It sure does. Is there anything in your body? Like, I guess I'm trying to, I'm asking you this question because I'm wanting to help the listeners understand their own body and their own operating system so that yeah. they can be yeah. more in tune with the, the, the messages that come to them. Because to me, I think obviously we're receivers and transmitters, you know, we're these human operating systems. Yeah. And so for you, did you ever, do you, did you ever notice a pattern of like, when you were going against your intuition, you felt sort of like weird in a certain part of your gut. And did you ever feel like when you were with your intuition and making the right decision that you felt a certain way? I'm just curious, did you get any body, you know, any body system yeah. reactions? Um, I mean, I guess you do feel it in your third eye and your amygdala and all of those receptors up here. It's complicated to sort of work it out. Yeah. yeah, I (laughs) I know it's not an easy question. You are in tune with the spiritual and the two things sort of act. I guess everybody has a different signal coming in. There are Mm -hmm. a lot of noises and there are a lot of signals and you have to separate the noise from the signal and then find the right signal, maybe in the mantra or maybe in your philosophy or maybe in silence. Uh, who knows which is the best way for each other, but we find our way. But the main thing is to your listeners and everybody else, it's not like only just pursuing your dreams. It's like pursuing every second of your life, like to realize you can be snuffed up like a candle or like tuning a radio station. You're gone. If I turn this computer off, we lose our connection. Yeah. So every moment is then hyper, hyper precious that we realize mm. that we're on a limited time scale here, whether it's your diet 10 or 100, it doesn't matter. It's limited. Every breath is counted. Every hair on your head, Jesus said, is counted. It's true. And it's like we have to go through this maze. It's like a labyrinth. And sometimes we turn left and it's blocked. Yeah. And you can give up and go back and go, or you can climb over the fence with a step ladder, which is what happens when you take drugs often. Is like you do do the shortcut. It doesn't always work, and sometimes it's really a mistake. But once again, if you're experiencing and everything in life, and when I was in India at 17, I wanted to experience what those Indians were experiencing because yeah. it was boring in Australia, really boring. And in India, you could it was poverty everywhere, but it wasn't boring. Yeah. It was like everybody was on one. You know, there are shrines everywhere, everywhere. There's flowers everywhere. Have you been to India? I have not yet. Have been, yet. Uh, well, you Operative word, yet. It's, just, it's living <laughs> spirituality. And it hasn't changed very much over all those. And I went on quite a few pilgrimages there recently, like went back and went up to the Himalayas and went up to some very special places up in, right up near Mustang, up near Tibet. So the thing is, keep moving like a shark. Never stop. Just keep your gills open and keep, you know, swimming around, going through the coral. God, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's not so. Oh, there's a pool. And like discriminate, swim through the ocean of such a Dananda, the ocean of bliss, and we'll have a great time. I mean, spirituality, you shouldn't get too serious about this thing. Spirituality is fun. And as we know, fun rules. Fun rules. Uh, I know. Have fun, fun change your life, and change the world. Fun. Like, oh. If you're with someone and they're not fun, you know, like there are plenty of other people who are fun. Let them get on with their life. Wish them well. But on the other hand, we have to forge our own way. There's no time to hang around with people who are not conducive to your spiritual uprising. It's so true. There's no time. It's... I mean, other people will do that. that. That's their job. That's great. You know, look, at, but we've got a different job to do. Our job is, I mean, the most 
beautiful thing in the world is beauty. I mean, you can't get away from it. We are attracted to beautiful things. We're attracted to beautiful music. We're attracted to beautiful songs, beautiful people, beautiful scenery. This is what whoever created all this, this was part of the payoff, wasn't it? To have this beautiful planet. Yes. And what are we doing with it? What are we doing in Brazil? I'm going back next week. I want to kick this guy in the ass. I know. He's a motherfucker of all time. I know. Oh, I'm going there next week to I'll cancel my visa. Take that back. Delete. No. <laughs> no. Down the Amazon. No, but but so let, let's talk. Okay, so obviously we have there's two approaches to outrage, right? You can be outraged yeah. with the state of affairs on the planet and be, right. you know, pissed off and negative, and it's okay to be angry and pissed off, and you can live on right. that path, and that's your thread. You know, that's the costume yeah. that you wear, or you get yeah. to go be like you and I and all these other beautiful people who are listening to this, this episode and who are out there to be change makers, you know, and it takes a lot more work, a lot more work to be positive and to think of all the beauty and the potential. It's easy to look at what the situation is right now and just be like, ah, you know, and, and yeah, go there for a second and let it fuel you, but then come over to this other path of action to, to make the difference that we know that all of us need to come together to do. And so music I've never been to any other event in my whole life ever other than a music event that everybody in the audience is on the same page. You know, if you go to yeah. political rally, there's always going to be some opposition. Yeah. You go to a sports yeah. event, yeah, opposition, yeah. whatever, anything. There's always yeah. us versus them. Music to me is the most unifying yeah. glue, the medicine that brings yeah. our souls and our hearts together. Right. And so I love that you are, cons- you're, you're still doing it. Like you're like, I'm going to go leave my comfortable yeah. home and go to Brazil and go spread this love, this magic, you know? Um, and this, so songs of the week, of course, I can, every song you've ever written and, and support can be our song of the week. And we talked about two that are like my favorite. And, yeah. and you were surprised that I picked yeah. Botanical Dimensions as like one of my most favorite songs. Um, and I said that it makes me feel personally like I am the earth. Like I feel like I am part, right. I am, I am the earth, not part of the earth. I am the earth when I listen to yeah, that song. Yeah, and yeah. I love so much and I want our audience to go listen to that. And of course, DMT is a super powerful, like, holy cow, I'm going to the next dimension of out there cosmology right. craziness. Like, is there, yeah. are there any other songs you want to share with the audience? Well, well, that are your heart I mean, songs. Yeah, you know, I've got. I've been getting into the third album a lot lately because we've just made brought it out on vinyl too. And there's some tracks on that there that sort of been overlooked in a way, even by us. And one of the reasons why we had 22 ID marks on that record. Okay. So it's very confusing if I say nothing lasts, you wouldn't know what track number it is unless you're really a fan. Mm-hmm. You know, even my close mates, even Simon doesn't know it. But you probably know everything. I don't. I don't. There's I'm just a newbie. Tra- there's these three tracks on the. I think it's eight, one, two, eight, seven, eight, nine. I think or eight. Yeah, seven, eight, nine on the third album called Nothing Lasts. It's yes. Three pieces. Oh Do you remember that? Yes. 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 My whole body is just like. Nah, 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 nah. I love it. It's the so line. good. <laughs> Thank you for making that for my little heart and soul. <laughs> That's what happens when I listen to that. <laughs> well, that, that one, that one sort of gets me off. You know, somehow that one gets in my head, and I love that. Yeah, it's not one of our most popular numbers, and we've never played it on stage or anything. But I just, you know, I really like that very much. But. When you're doing them, you really get into it. And you know how it is. When you, you get into a track or something, it, it sort of obsesses you until you go through it and you go to the next one. All I can think right now is in three days or four days, I'll go up to Simon's got a new studio, a new house, a new engineer. And it's a blank canvas. I yeah. mean, we do not know what we do. And this is how I paint, too. I just put the canvas yep. out. And I do this on the stage off and I just start with a dot and do a painting. And then the painting just comes out because, as, you know, like you just want to have faith that every line that you do is coming out and it's going to be okay. You never make a mistake, basically. So 
painting, I think, is very close to music. It's like all about the line, and the music's all about the line and getting the balance and everything. So all these art forms fit into each other like a beautiful... I don't know. Tapestry. It's, it's a beautiful tapestry <laughs> together. Yeah, it's like this. And apart from having the planet, which is so fantastic, and our friends, we've got the music as well. I mean, can you imagine a world without music? No. It's just impossible. No. It would be impossible. Impossible. So we are living in, in, you know, they talk about the previous ages and the Renaissance and the Greeks and the Egyptians. We right now are living in the best time ever. Yes. This is the momentous time of, of freedom, of letting go of revolution, of a revolution of the heart. Yes. This is what we're changing now. It's like, we're moving in, you know, this is far out. <laughs> right now. Going around the planet, you see it. You know, if I was in London the whole time, I'd look out the window, but going to Brazil, and the next week I'm going to Russia or Moscow, and then I'm going to uh, Japan, which we always go to, and then come back and then go to India and have my holidays on the beach and play there too. So the whole thing is just like, oh, I had a good line this morning I want to share with you. Yes, Two yes, one. good. The world is a party and you're the guest of honor. Yes, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> the other one was, uh, the body is a temple. But it's also a nightclub. That's the thought of a day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. Okay. <laughs> you know, we're just, we are just, you know, we're just so lucky. I mean, we have to congratulate each other every day and say congratulations. You know, I'm going to slap my own back you know, like this. I mean, we've really got to appreciate ourselves too and realize that don't be shy you know we've we've got our personalities go out there let's rock totally oh my god i love it and i love that you're inviting people to celebrate that they made it another day and like let's go rock it and each breath is precious like you said earlier like we forget that and we get stuck in these little whatever yeah. we're doing yeah. and it's like no really like you could be smushed like a fly any day and so go do the coolest thing that you can do every single day because you don't even know if you're going to get another breath so go rock the yeah. shit out of this Absolutely. joint right so oh my god so right. Right on. you are seriously like you're my new best friend. <laughs> well, I'm a fan of yours, too. Now I'm a big fan of yours. See, this is how relationships start. You meet new people, and so it goes on. We've had a lot of people at Boulder. I love Boulder. I thought it was such a cool place, one of the coolest places ever. And I loved Colorado. You know, I studied in New York for years, but I should have gone to Colorado and forgotten all of that New York crap. Oh no! It's you much more important. <laughs> you know, really, Colorado is just super people. They God, we met so many nice people there, and they'll be friends for life, even if we never see them again. We're in contact, and that's how it, it goes. Or they'll come over here. Everything's very fluid at the moment. It really is, and I just you know I really want to invite the audience who's listening right now, like take a chance. And even if you feel uncomfortable or nervous, like reach out to somebody who you admire and say thank you, you know, and that's what I got yeah. to do with you. And I got to use the gift and the glory and the magic of our technology. And, and it was like, oh my gosh, wow, our hearts got to connect instantly because of this technology. And I really want to invite everybody out there, like take a step forward and just say thank you to somebody on the planet that you admire, whether yeah. it's an artist or a musician, yeah. uh, you know, a mom, a dad, whoever, cool. like just do that. Yeah. And then you never know what's going to happen next, right? Exactly. You just exactly. never know. That's, you never know. And You've hit it. You know, gratitude. Gratitude is not a platitude. I mean, what we've got to express our thanks to everybody, to the planet, to our parents, to the friends, everybody, our, our secret helpers that we're not even aware of. I, know. I always feel there's, there's good forces around, angels. You know, Me too. I got, I got my tribe here you for know, sure. <laughs> you don't have to know all about that. You know, I just, Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, the sun is shining today. Thank you. 
Yes. It's beautiful. You know, we live in a wonderful world and a wonderful time, and it's just getting better all the time. And I'd say to all your listeners or anybody who I'll meet in the street tomorrow, if they ask me anything, I'd say, take a risk. Go for it. Get out of your comfort zone. Get on a tramp steamer and go to the end of the world. You'll come back a more far out person than going to business school. Totally. It's cool too. I'm sorry, listeners, if you go to business school, that's absolutely cool. It's okay. That's a good thing to do. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of choices. And if you want a really exciting life, you've got to get out of the fluorescent lit offices and those desks all crammed up and one hour for lunch and two weeks holiday a year. Forget all that shit. It's a bullshit story that try to put on you and tell you this is where it's at. It's not where it's at. Freedom is where it's at. Your own individuality is where it's at. Your heart will tell you. Good intuition coming from the heart. And go forward and embrace all your friends and do it together and form a group and form a political party, anything, but just don't sit on your ass. <laughs> don't sit on your ass. Okay. Life is better. Exactly. Okay. So, so let's ask you one question here that this, I think it's pretty important. Like what is one thing that you know you must do before you, you leave the planet as, as you, like, what do you, what are you just like, I have to go do this thing. Like, what is it? I would like to develop patience. <laughs> I'm the most impatient. You ask any of my family, my wife, how she puts up with me. I'm just oh I'm impatient for everything, you know, for everything, for the next, for this, for that, for yeah. that corner. And like, yeah, I just hope one will chill out a little bit more <laughs> in a good way. And it, you know, just accept how things are more than you try to fight the current. You know, it's always, you know, it's, there's problems all around you, you know. That's how it is in life. But we we have our friends who help us, and we have our inner guide that helps us, and we'll all get through this. And don't think this is the end, really. I always say this is the beginning. The beginning. Today is the beginning. Yeah. And we're going to rock. And we're going to make everybody smile and laugh and dance with joy with their arms upraised, singing Hari's holy name or whatever they want to sing. Yeah. Woohoo. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have to keep my eyes sort of on the time. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're we're probably we're so probably at that point. Two more pertinent questions. I'll try to be concise. I'm sorry, I am going to the country, so I know, I know. And you have been so gracious and like usually like our, our Dance Our Dreams interviews are about twenty to twenty five minutes and I just feel like you are you are an encyclopedia. Well, no, you're like this encyclopedia of gorgeous spiritual, juicy oh, wisdom God. that I want to share with the planet. And I think your message needs to yeah. get out. And I'm hoping that for right. me, part of my mission is to help share other people's messages. And so, I really oh, am okay. so honored that you took this time to be with us. It's, it's the time is nothing. But I want to say, if you've got anybody who writes to you or has any questions or anything, you want to refer them to me or through you, I am available. Yeah. I really am available for everybody, if I can. If I can even just cheer somebody up, you know, just <laughs> make it a a joke. I don't know anything. But just, just realize that we are fun. We are fun things living in this body and we're, we're dying to get out and yeah. party and have fun and be nice and love each other. I mean, that's all I want. Totally. And you're so good. Like you made me feel like, I think, I, I don't know if I said at the beginning of the podcast or if it was before we even started recording, but you're like, it feels like Christmas. We're going to talk to each other. I'm like, I'm for with me? Like, you feel like that? Like, that's how I feel. Oh, yeah, no, look at you. Just, you look fantastic. You are fantastic. Your house is fantastic. I'd love to hear you, DJ. And it was so sweet of you, Valerie, to reach out and do this with me. I so appreciate it, really. You know, I, I don't try to do many interviews or things, you know, try to keep it down, but I really felt this very strong connection with your spirit and your motivation and your desire of helping the planet and doing all these practical things that I don't even know what you do, but I, I can feel what you do. And it's amazing and wonderful and you should be congratulated and uh, keep doing it. Just keep rocking. <laughs> 
I will. I want to hear your praise. You will. We're going to, I, I, I'm in, I, I have a big dream. Like I have this dream for 2020 that we do this, like we are the dream tour and we get all of us yummy people to go like accelerate the movement of, of love and peace. And obviously in the United States, it's like a, it's a, it's a political year. So it's like, we really need to shift the climate up here and it's, it's depressing. And so I'm not a political person, but I know that like, if we can get young people activated, I think we can do something really powerful yeah. and we can get them to feel hopeful and empowered and not like disenfranchised which I think yeah. a lot of folks are right now so so I'm really excited about you know doing that and you know coming back online after my eight years of selling envelopes as it were uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's bring it up again maybe after Brazil totally we can have another chat we can have an update and, and put some of these ideas into action and have a think about it but you've been very stimulating you've really given me a lot of ideas support and what i'm doing with my life and continue but really thank you valerie very much and thank you so much is there um how can people find you is there any way we can help you support your tour and all the shows that you're doing where can everybody yeah, find you facebook messenger just send in a request pretty full but they can always send in messages or email you've got that i don't mind if people email me um <laughs> messenger email or yeah or smoke signals everything everybody loves the smoke signals <laughs> no i'm good at getting back and you know following that through you know i mean this is what we do you know it's we just don't stand there playing music. Yeah. So anyone can do that. I know, right? The jukebox yeah. can do that. We're the soul that kind of gets to come through. And thank goodness for you. And yeah. I wish you so much love and uh, blessings yeah. and delight yeah. and peace yeah. and harmony and strength and courage. Uh, Every time you stand on that stage, just know that like somebody like me is out there feeling the love that you have created. That's very touching. That's really that really is very, very touching, those words, really. It means a lot to me. Yeah. Because, you know, we're all insecure. That's part yeah. of the trip. Yeah. And though we have this bravado and this and everything, deep down, you know, an insult can really hurt. Sure. Or praise can really lift you up. Not praise, but, you know, involvement. But, you know, you're dealing... I mean, we're in a political mess here, right? The same as America. We're yeah. about to impeach our guy. I mean, it's... It's madness what's going on, but one, though I follow it and everything, you're detached from it too, because you know, even though it's our world and they're fucking it up and all of that, we've got our mission to do, and we have to go ahead and not get distracted with all the nonsense. There's too much nonsense around. We've yeah. got to go for the reality. Yep. And the reality is love. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. The simplest four letter word in the language. I know. I love that four letter word. <laughs> All right. I know you got to rock and roll. So I love you so much. I and love talking to you. I, I mean, this could go up for you. I know. <laughs> We'd probably, I'd have to cancel my trip. I'd be so, you know, anyhow, we'll continue. And maybe next time we'll work out the Zoom problem. But I've enjoyed this. It's been fun. Thank you. And maybe next time I'll just be in person with you somewhere and I'll come fly and, and, and get to, you know, showcase your beautiful work I'm somewhere. Lucky. It would be so much fun. You could have so much fun. Totally. You love it. Yeah. You all my friends. Yeah. I love you. All right. I love okay. you so much. And I have so thank time. you so, 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 so much. And blessings ah. to you on your journeys. And can't wait to see what's going on next. <laughs> all right, everybody, let's take a big inhale together. A big, some inhale, some love. And exhale, peace out to our planet. All right. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Raja Ram. <laughs> I love you. Thank you, darling. Sounds good.